Hello, and welcome to this video. In this tutorial, we're going to build a blueprint system for floating objects in the air. First, we'll create a simple blueprint that makes objects float without gravity. Then, we'll add impact sounds when they collide. After that, we'll make it more advanced by defining a specific area for them. If the objects move too far from this area, they will slowly return to their original position. As you can see, I pushed everything away. But after a few seconds, they smoothly returned back to their place. To demonstrate better, I'll test it with this chair. As you can see, it gently and smoothly returns to its starting point. All right, let's get started. First, open the modeling mode and create a simple cube. Now, by pressing Ctrl and B, you can find the static mesh inside your files. Before we continue, we need to fix its collision. Open the mesh, and you'll see that it doesn't have a simple collision. Go to the collision menu and click Add Box Simplified Collision. This will create a box collision for our mesh. As you can see, the green outline shows the collision box. You can resize or rotate it to better fit your mesh. Also, don't forget to set it in the details panel so it uses the simple box collision. Now, our mesh is ready. Let's go ahead and create a blueprint for it. Now, bring your cube into the blueprint. Go to the event graph, add a set simulate physics node, and connect it to event begin play. Make sure the target is your mesh. Enable the simulate checkbox. Next, Add a Set Enable Gravity node. You can also enable or disable physics with gravity directly in the Details panel. But here I used nodes, so later if we create child blueprints, we won't face issues. Now we have a simple cube floating in the air. Since the cube looks too static, let's give it an initial push. For that, Add an Add Impulse node. And for rotation, use Add Torque in Radians. Now create two float variables called Impulse and Rotation. Add a random unit vector node. Get the impulse variable and multiply them together. Then multiply it again with get mass from your mesh. Finally, connect that to the impulse input. As you can see, it works. The cube starts moving with random speed based on its mass. For torque, repeat the same setup, but without using mass. If it doesn't spin enough, increase the value a bit. Now it works fine. Let's move on to adding impact sounds. I downloaded a free sound from the internet. Create a sound cue. Add the sound and connect it to the output. Make sure the sound is not set to loop. Adjust the volume and pitch depending on your sound.
Now, back in the blueprint, right-click on the mesh and add an event hit. To play the sound, use Spawn Sound at Location. Add a Do Once node before it. And a Delay node after it. Then connect the delay back to Reset Do Once. I set the delay to 0.6 seconds so the sound won't spam if the mesh gets stuck. From the hit result, break it with break hit result. Use the hit location as the sound location. Set your sound. And now everything works perfectly. Now, let's move to the final part. I created a new level so it's easier to test. Right now, when I push the mesh, it just keeps going forever. It never comes back. In a real project, you could handle this by spawning your blueprints inside a trigger box. So, when the player enters that area, the objects appear. But, this may not always be practical. For example, if the player interacts a lot in that zone, or in many other scenarios. So instead, we are going to build a system that makes the object slowly return to its original position. First, we need to keep the initial location. So, I create a vector variable. Then, I set it right after the begin play event. I use get world location, and connect it to the variable. To test it, I print the value. Now, I know the initial location is saved at the start. Next, I need something like an event tick, but I want it to run once every second. So, I place a sequence node. Then, I use set timer by event. I create a custom event, connect it, and check looping. The time is set to one second. Now, with get world location, I check the mesh position every second. I compare it with the initial location using the distance node. This gives me the distance between the two vectors. Then, I add a branch node. If the distance is greater than my value, it's true. If it's smaller, it's false. When it's true, I add force. But for that, I need a direction. Here comes the magic node. Get unit direction. It gives me the direction from one vector to another, from the mesh to the initial location.
I also print the result and multiply it by a float variable. This lets me control the strength. Let's test it. The value is too high. Around 90,000 works fine. Now the mesh is moving, but it gets stuck in a loop. To fix that, I add linear damping and angular damping. Linear damping slows down straight movement. Angular damping slows down infinite rotation. The values I used work fine. Now everything looks good. But there is one problem. The cube only plays sound when it collides with the player. To fix this, go to the Mesh Details panel. Enable Simulation Generates Hit Events. You can also enable Use CCD if needed. Now the sound works as expected, and that's it. I hope this was helpful. You can download the project for free from the description. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you.